This is the shape of the brake lining on a drum brake. So how can the lining with a semicircular shape do the braking? In this video, we will discuss an animation about how drum brakes work. Braking can occur because there is friction between a moving object and a static object. This friction produces resistance that makes the object heavier to move. In drum brakes mechanism, there are two components that touch. First, the brake lining which is shaped like a semicircle like this. The brake lining is installed on brake shoe, and it is a static component. And the second component is the brake drum which is shaped like a bowl. The drum is a moving component. In other words, this drum will be connected to the wheel and will rotate according to the rotation of the wheel. So, the braking on a drum brake occurs when the brake shoe comes into contact with the drum. Then how does the contact mechanism work? The construction of the drum brake system consists of two brake shoes and a brake drum that is installed on the outside. So, these two linings fit into the concavity of the drum. When in a free position or not at braking, we can see that there is a gap between the lining and the drum. So, this drum is free to rotate without any resistance. But, when the brakes are applied, both of these pads will expand. And that will cause contact between the drum and the brake pads. This is what stops the drum from rotating. So that braking can occur. Then, what is the mechanism for moving the brake pads so that they expand simultaneously? The brake pads have two ends, upper and lower ends. The lower end functions as a hinge. So, why can the brake shoes expand because there is a hinge at the lower end? Then, at the upper end, there is a brake drive mechanism. This mechanism has two types, mechanical and hydraulic. The mechanical type only uses a cam. So, when this cam rotates, the protrusion will push both brake shoes outward. This mechanism is widely used on Matic scooter. For the rear brakes, while on the hydraulic type, there is a hydraulic mechanism on the top. It consists of a cylinder, two pistons, and an inlet as an input way for brake fluid. When the brake is pressed, the brake fluid will be pushed into the cylinder. As a result, both pistons will be pushed out so that both brake shoes will also be pushed. The hydraulic type has a more responsive braking profile. This is usually found on the rear brakes of cars. Next, there is an adjustment mechanism. This is used to adjust the gap between the drum and the brake lining. The mechanism is located below. There is a hinge here, but the hinge is not attached to the chassis backplate directly. This hinge is placed on a component called the adjustment rod. We can adjust the length of the adjustment rod. When the gear is turned, it will make the adjustment rod longer or shorter. When it gets longer, the gap becomes narrower and that makes the brakes more responsive. The last is the parking brake mechanism. The parking brake on the car is separate, so there is its own mechanism even though the actuator used is the same as the drum brake. So, the mechanism on the parking brake consists of two levers that are installed like this. This lever is connected via a wire to the parking brake lever. So, when we pull the parking brake lever, the lever inside the drum brake will be pulled, so that it will stretch the two brake shoes to press the drum. In other words, the parking brake does not use the power cylinder above, but it has its own mechanism to stretch the pads. That's an animation of how drum brakes work. Hopefully it can increase our insight.